Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War and it's Guild Wars Day 3 Purple Day. So let's see what we have in store today. We're in bracket 2, some nice tough defences to go up against. We're up against the Moonlight Slayers and first up is Mainrath. So what Mainrath has got, Finesse, Centurion, Writhing Staff and Zulgoth. Centurion and Zulgoth, a particularly dangerous combination because of the way Centurion converts all skulls to times two wild cards which usually fills up Zulgoth really really quickly so we need a fast team for this because if they get that going it could be in a world of trouble that's a good weapon to use with this team as well the scatter damage not so much but that creation of skulls certainly and entangling the first enemy means if any of the skulls miss then they're going to be safe because we're going to be entangled so it's a good combination we need a fast team for this and see what I've got set up here. Do you like this team? It is very good. Really good looping team with Shabani Vespera, but it might be too slow for this, and I'm not going to use it. I don't use red or brown at all in this team. I'm using three different colours. And if it doesn't give me my colours and it gives, you know, there's red and brown on the board, I need to take the red and brown to stop them getting Centurion charged, which is not going to help me at all. So I'm not using that team. Right, this one has pros and cons over this team. This one has a summon in it, potentially from Shabanu. So if you lose Thrall, that can be good, but I need something quicker than that against this team. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to try and cast Leprechaun. Start his battles with full mana, which hopefully will charge up Thrall if there's not any natural purple matches on the board to start with, obviously. He destroys a load of gems, takes damage. And then, not too worried about the second part of the spell, it's the creation of gems, which is, and giving the mana, which is the main thing about that. And then we'll try and use Zulgoth as quickly as we can to get rid of their Zulgoth and take it from there. All right, I'm just going to check my medals ever so quickly. Oh, glad I did that, because when you do the events, you can have this, the, the event medal equipped, so it's best to make sure you've got the right Metal equipped. That's better. Nice uh, Arnu Orpheus. Alright, let's do the first battle. Thrall, Zilgoth, Reflection, yes. Alright. Elementalist class, trying to get some of them entangled, if possible. Alright, could do a four match from somewhere, really. If I could make that green drop down to there, that would give a four match, but there's no blue to do that with. The brown is no benefit, so they literally is giving me one move, which is to explode Leprechaun, which is not too bad. There are quite a lot of green gems dotted around, we'll do that. Didn't get thrown up, and he's still not charged up, so... This is already slightly worrying times because they're not far away from getting their writhing staff up. Now I could really do with getting Thrall up, but um, it's going to have to be Leprechaun again, I think. Right, I am going to take this one because I would rather them take this yellow for example if I take this one it's going to spoil that yellow so I want to try and control them to a degree but this is still not ideal they still may well get their writhing staff up first but it is what it is all right let's go leprechaun right okay not too bad Right, now let's get rid of there's all. Which caused a nice little reaction. Some Churigan is entangled on that four match. It's, um, it's okay. We're able to take the skull hit. It's not going to kill him, but he's burning, so it's going to have an effect afterwards. Or if we explode a load of gems. No, I'm going to go with 
Thrall. Might have worked out decent. Let's get rid of their hero. Nice chain reaction there. We've got some four matches at the bottom. Yes. Don't actually need that, but if I take that, then I'll take that anyway. So I'd rather give it to me. Thank you very much. I'd rather do it with skulls to leave everybody charged. But hey, quick is quick. That's not too bad. I'll, I'll take that after a little bit of a shaky start. And up to a 3,266. Alright, fight two. Leonis Tower, Essence of Evil, Enrage, Kurandara, and Moonsinger. This is a different kind of team to fight here. These two cannot be killed by Zulgoth. They are invulnerable, so they cannot be hit by lethal damage. Both of these are the same. So Skulls is still a way forward, but we do not want them to get a good start at the same time. Um, and Moonsing is going to convert purple to green. Obviously Leprechaun is a good counter to that. We can explode green at the beginning. But this is really good for skulls, and skulls are going to be really good against them towers and stuff. Tell you what, just for a variety, I am going to have a go with this team. Do like this team when it starts looping. In Archmage's class. Just show you the banners quick on this. It is plus two purple, plus one blue, minus one green. And when in Archmage's, Archmage's is one of the classes where just about all the traits are really, really good. Or decent at least. Some some are wasted in other classes, not so much in this one. We're going to get a bonus to purple from purple gems, which is really good. Then I'll go for a magical shield, dark hunger, anti magic sphere, mana source, and Tikkuti. I don't think. Yeah, the other ones are no good. Um, Arcane surge or lightning strike on this. We're going to get a lot of four matches. Yeah, I'm going to go to that. Oh, no, we've got enough purple. <laughs> All right, yep, yeah, that'll do. Oh, no, let's change that because of Vespera. Yeah. Let's have a go. Not as fast to start this team, but once it gets going, it is really, really good usually. Wow. Not the best starting board I've ever seen in my life. Let's check their purple to green first. We've got a little bit there. Nothing there. If I take this, it's probably going to set them up. Hang on, if I take this one, that's going to disappear, that's going to drop down to there, so they're going to get... Three, and that one. I've still got this one here. Um, Damn. Gives them a fairly good start, but I don't seem to have much of a choice. I can wing this. Take red. Hopefully a purple will drop down after that. That is pushing the boat out in hope big time. Uh, no, I'm going to have to give them a little bit of a... Oh, they didn't take it. Because they probably knew that was going to happen. Okay. Fair enough. Is 
Come on, give me some mana. Holy crap. Alright, it's gonna take a green to there. Move the brown over to there. The brown's gonna come down and make another three. If I actually use some of these colours, it would be nice. It's given me so many colours I don't use. It's been mean. Yeah, let's do that. And of course, it set them up with a nice match. Wowzers. Oh, I'm going to have to give them another skull hit because there's two here. There's one here, one here. Can't avoid one or the other, so may as well... Yeah, well, well, this is disastrous. So they had... <laughs> oh, dear. Huh. Strange. So, we can still win it from here, believe it or not. need some four matches now with this bearer big time need to get a loop going but wow there's it's really bad on our side of things and she's stunned so we're not going to get the four matches either yep this is awkward because i have to use my cleanse at some point But I do need to hope Vespera gives some life and stuff to herself yet, yeah, as well as keeps some four matches going. Well, wow. right, boosted up her life now. So her attack is going up to 166. Should have taken that skull hit the four match a minute ago, but I sort of liked the way the colours were there, if you know what I mean. At some point, I've got to risk letting them have the turn back to use my ram. But if I get lucky with Vespera, then she can keep on boosting up the magic, and that can make that really, really powerful. That's not going to be an extra turn. All right, let's see what Kurandar was about to do. Yellow to Doom Skulls. That looks like that is going to be safe. So I can't cast this yet because I'm going to explode some gems and mess up the board. But I need to hope that he casts. 56 to all enemies is something I'm going to have to deal with. Can get life back from Shabanu. So I hope this doesn't set them up. <laughs> Trouble is now, I need a bit of luck now when I'm cast this Doom and Ram because this is not going to explode much and I can't get rid of all these skulls in one go. The Doom skulls, that is going to hit that one. It is going to cause a mini reaction. All right, I need to cast this. And get lucky. Not didn't get lucky. Then this game is over. Risky exotic strategy, but um, hey ho. They got the moon singer up. Purple to green. Could let if I left that one, that would set me up. But typically, the way this game has gone so far, it's the only sensible move to make. Um, yeah, I have to take that. Let's 
going to bring this one down so at least I can get rid of their hero. I'm still in with a sniff of a chance here, an uh, absolute sniff, because my attack has gone up to a really good amount because of Sharbanu. But yeah, squeaky bum time on the very first fight. Flippinac. Got to do that. Right, two skull hits away from pulling out an unlikely victory. Do not need their Kurandara getting charged up, so I think I need to take this. Right, okay, we win. Flip an act, that was an effort. Wow. Pulled it out of the bag somehow. Oh, forgot to take my points. <laughs> so, um, lost in a moment of actually pulling through that game that I forgot to look at the points, but can sort of look at them after. I press the. Uh, so, 4,480 points so far. So, if you're really that bothered, you can look at the first score and take away the difference from that score there to see what that was worth. Next fight Toxed, Toxed the Moon. Wraith, Member Sira, Doom Glaive, Mercy. Transform a purple to yellow and cleanse all allies. Of course, with Mercy, very good. Doom the Gavel. So, uh, oh, Wraith, don't see this very often. So, I'm going to go with this team again because the other team with Zulgoth and Thrall and Leprechaun. Oh, excuse me, could have been better maybe, but I kind of want to show this team working more properly. She's going to convert purple to yellow, so we need to check that first. That does tend, does tend to cast that straight away. We want to take his way as much benefit of that as we can, while obviously gaining for ourselves. There's a little bit of value for him there. I'm not too worried about that one, especially as we can get double benefit from Is that there. It's astonishing when you've got like a thing going here we get, get plus two purple for example we get bonus purple as well and things like that and you need one literally purple match to get thrall up and the game just says no 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 i'm not letting you do that that's too easy mate no mana surge wow what have I done to the devs lately to deserve these tough games? No mana surge again. Come on. Behave. Yeah, I can deal, I can deal with that. Right. Vespera. Oh, what? Oh, God, they've done it on the... Oh, my God, that's really screwed me up. So it would do the one that's most annoying. Oh my god, that was like the odds on that. The game never plays that well normally. It just does something really random and stupid. Steal life from the enemy or steal their mana. So it decided to steal my mana from the one troop which was um, good and ready to go. Alright, Thrall, need you buddy. Need some stuff in a hurry. Right, now we've got Vespera up again. She is ready to go. Cast this on Thrall, even though he's death marked, and we didn't get an extra turn out of that. He's frozen. So, yes. Uh, need some more purple. I'm going to put this on myself. And the reason is, when Vespera casts her spell, it give 25 in this case to a random skill on an ally then create nine gems of their mana color then repeat two more times for random allies so it can go you get you guaranteed one boost on whoever you cast it on uh like now my damage has gone up a little bit and it can happen two more times for random allies and that's why there's it's purposely limited to quite a few just so little colors in this team I forgot I had my skeleton. 
get engrossed in the explanations sometimes and I actually forget to concentrate on my game. It's not an excuse, it's just literally the way it is sometimes. Alright, we've got a percentage chance, a 30% chance to summon a Jin. We're matching four or more gems, so it's possible we can get back to a full roster. Let's cast this again on herself this time. Alright, we've got the Jin back. This does reduce the chance of getting a four match now because yellow has in, been introduced into the mix of colours we use. Or an extra yellow. So the sake is obviously Shabana uses it, but it's an extra yellow element, so it can actually cause less purple to be created when we want them. It's always worth checking back on your hero now and again on this uh, team because my damage has gone up to 142 heavy splash damage now because Shabanu's randomness of her spell has put it on magic, which has boosted my magic up, which is really good. But we're still going to use this for the moment and see if we can get a few more four matches going on and get some more purple on the board. It's gone up 185 now, so let's see if we can take it to the point where we zap these suckers in one go. I right, don't need that really. It's good to leave purple on the board, so I'm going to leave that there. 228 now. But I will take this blue to get that out of the way. Cut this again on myself. I want my splash damage raised up. It's basically a one in four chance of that getting raised up to a really, really good level because you can either go on uh, your attack, your armor, your life, or your magic. Get rid of some of these red. I don't want red. I want more purple, if anything. Let's cast Skeleton while there's a free extra turn for him. Yeah, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but it's fun to use. So that's going to do... It's heavy splash damage, so that's going to do 75% to the adjacent troop. So that's roughly... What's that? 75 off of that. So around about 240, which is not quite enough to kill Mercy in one go. So let's go for one more boost. Did that work? Wait. That's going to get her charged up again. Let's do it one more time just for fun. Four hundred and six. All right, let's cast this. I think that is going to be well. Will be now because we've hit the the hero. Okay, and um, even though I use a few turns there to actually boost things up, um, you only lose like it's only worth one point per per turn I think it is, per complete turn, so, or using a, a format or something, so it's not too bad, 1,479 points is okay. Okay, next fight is against Fish Fetish, hmm, interesting name, Rash to Life and Death, Arachnian Weaver King Avalon, bit of a classic Life and Death Arachnian Weaver team here. Uh, King Avalon's going to give the Elves a 50% start. So these two are going to start with half their mana, which is really, really nice for them. And a really good true damage combination of Life and Death and Arachnian Weaver. With an Lamastu, starting with full mana and wanting to convert yellow to purple. So a dangerous team. This is not the right way to go about this. These are going to be stealthy, I take it. Stealthy, yes, and Arachnian Reaver is stealthy by default if you get the first trait. So, not a great team here. I need to be able to hit their stealthy opponent. So for that reason, I'm going to go to a Grey King setup. The Grey King destroys all gems of a chosen colour with full effect, and this is the double benefit on this one, really, on this team. And all enemies of that colour take true damage, are mana drained, silenced and frozen. It's really handy that Life and Death and Arachnian Weaver use purple. And the fact is that we'll be destroying purple because we hit both of them at the same time then with that true damage and they take the mana drain, silenced and frozen. 
and we give the purple to ourselves. So this is a good setup for this. A Leprechaun is going to start battles with full mana and explode. My Reflection of Good will cast on Thrall should he get entangled or anything like that. And Thrall will be the mana generator. So that is the way this is going to go uh, in Elementalist class at the moment. And yeah, I'll stick with that. No reason to change. A mana generator should be quite quick in this. The traits I'm going for here are Snap Freeze, Insulated, Thunder Fist. I'll have to check that one. Watery Binding, Deluge, Lightning Strike, and Fortitude. I will just check that, actually. Snap Freeze, Insulated. Oh, that's why I don't think it really makes any difference we may as well go for that one okay all right let's jump in so i'll is entangled so that is exactly what is expected but on the cost leprechaun because obviously our king needs brown and blue at the same time so by casting leprechaun with a good mix of green on the board and stuff everywhere should hopefully get a good charge on everybody at the same time right now that is pretty decent let's check this first yellow to purple really good for them right off the bat need to stop that i can take that manually that would stop that and that would potentially give my Grey King the charge he needs. I won't take this really to guarantee he gets charged up. But I can't let them get all this yellow to purple. Just just no. Not allowed. I can accept that. Now I will hit that on purple. That's done a damage to their two main troops that they are relying on for this battle. I think I'll throw Essence of Evil. Essence of Evil? Not Essence of Evil. It's um, Reflection of Good. I wasn't going to throw it on Thrall, but I got that nice little match there on the thing there. Uh, so I'd like to take them out straight away, but they're not actually a danger right now, so I'm going to put Reflection of Good onto Thrall. That's going to cleanse him. Explode a load of gems of our colour. We can now cast this again and get rid of their two main troops. And we control that game in the end really nicely. And that was a really nice counter to that team. Normally very dangerous, but they can be picked off like that. And it's definitely a good way to go about it. I want to take care of King Avalon before he gets charged up though, because I don't want him summoning a troop and making the fight any longer so we can do this on blue which is one of his colors as well as give gray king a bit more charge himself and skull bash he drained his mana so that's good we can now explode some gems and end the game and that worked out really really nice One thousand six hundred and thirty two points that time Right, battle five against the Paragon is against the Noob. I suspect you are lying, Noob, but hey ho, if you've had that game since um, that name since day one, then it would have been relevant at the time, but clearly not now, so we'll take a look. Oh, good old Web Spinner, Fist of Zorn, Fist of Superior Dawnbringer. Match, Web Spinner, Dangerous, steals a triple a skull damage to poisoned and webbed enemies but the thing is with this as most people know it, it inflicts a web when doing skull damage and that gets applied basically before the skull hits so that triple damage is absolutely instant and they're going to create do a fist of zorn who's going to create a load of yellow i mean a load of skulls from the beginning because it starts with full of mana and sister superior usually starts casting first to cleanse the web spinner should we decide to entangle that thing so 
a dangerous team, and they were Dawn Bringers there for a barrier in extra damage too. So I am not going to go with this team. This is totally the wrong one. I don't think I've got what I've got set up in mind at all to going at the moment. So now I'm going to edit this team completely. Uh, one of the best ways to fight Web Spinner is to use a Impervious Troop that uses, in this case, Purple, obviously. Uh, Impervious, immune to all status effects, Devour, Lycanthropy, and Mana Burn, and Web is one of those things that he's, or she, whatever it is, is immune to. Um, I'm gonna go with two of these, just for fun. Uh, true Damage, so I'm going to chuck Life and Death into the mix. Okay, and Leprechaun as my mana generator. All right, banners wise, we're not using red or blue. Nope, want some purple really, that's pretty good. Green and purple, yeah, I like that. That works. Class, I think I'll go or Reaper myself. Or shall I go Thief? No, I think I'll go Thief. Nice 50% start myself. Start battles with 50% mana. And because we're truly doing true damage, that helps as well, that deal 7 damage to the last enemy on 4 or 5. Attacks. It's damaged, as in, but not true damage, but every little helps. Right, so uh, I think that will do. The banners are done. So I think this is um, an okay team. Double Arachne and Weaver. Life and Death. That Impervious should stop the Web Spinner getting triple damage. That is the main threat in this team. And then we'll be hitting them hard with true damage ourselves. Let's go. Let's go, Tokyo. Uh, that's a terrible start for us. Absolutely nothing of relevance there. Yellow to skulls. Uh, a little bit of goodness for them there, but I'm going to cast Leprechaun because there's a lot of yellow dotted around. And a lot of green dotted around at the same time, which is going to be really good for my first Arachnian Weaver. So hopefully this doesn't set them up in a big way. And it didn't. Excellent stuff. Right. Now we can uh, grab this first. So ordinarily, uh, if the web spin is mega dangerous, but by basically negating that triple skull damage, it's a lot safer team to use. You can almost use this team basically like normal. Or any team like normal. As long as you've got an impervious troop up top, um, you can pretty much play your team like normal. To be wary of these skulls. They are better to create a load of skulls, so... Do need to get rid of some of this yellow. This can take yellow and skulls at the same time, so kind of... Makes sense to do that. Now yellow to skulls is not an issue. They can cast that if they want. So that's that's why I like Arachnian Reaver as well, because when you don't kill an enemy at the start, then you don't actually adjust the board. And I don't really want to adjust the board right now. It's perfect if they cast their Fist of Zorn. There you go. It's, thank you very much. You've helped set me up. Sneak attack is giving them little pokes in the background there. It's not really doing anything, but it's better than nothing. All right, web spinner's nearly up again. Not web spinner. Weaver. I always try not to pick what the AI offers me. It's, <laughs> I don't know, it's probably paranoid and not true at all, but it always feels like the AI wants to help itself sometimes, so... Take this, take this! And... 
that one, I said, oh, I worked out okay. And the last troop got wiped out. Fantastic. So now it made me take the one it wanted me to take, so that's fair enough. This game is now nicely under control. Might as well take the purple. And then finish them off. That's fairly straightforward. Could have done that round or two earlier, maybe. And 1,730 points that was for that. The last battle there, which gives me a total of... I think that's going to be a better total than yesterday. I've got 5-0 yesterday as well, but... Wow, I had some really tough battles yesterday and some bad some bad boards. Uh, 9,321 is... Okay, nothing spectacular, but it's a... Okay, that's an okay total. That'll do. Right, well, there's more Guild Wars for today, and um, see what tomorrow brings. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.